our mission patch. And a unique view of the orbiter rollout uh, as it's rolling out to the Cape about two weeks before the launch. From launch to landing, Endeavour's 10-day mission was filled with amazing pictures. Shortly after setting up shop, the crew launched an inflatable satellite, the first of its kind for a shuttle crew. The tennis court-sized balloon inflated itself using nitrogen gas to support three tubular legs and then the dish-looking satellite itself. Surprising to astronauts and ground controllers, this thing started to rotate end over end in space. Mission scientists say they also saw some ripples on the surface of the dish. They want to know if inflatable satellites, which are cheaper to build and lighter to carry, could be used for communication over much longer distances from Earth or to shield heat-sensitive components from sunlight. The satellite later burned up in the atmosphere as planned. Endeavour also launched a tiny satellite using the Earth's magnetic field rather than thruster rockets to control it. In this case, the small object was a garbage can-sized satellite that will burn up in the atmosphere in a couple of weeks. Inside Endeavour's cargo bay, the space hab was chock full of experiments, including a new furnace used for chemistry experiments and a few thousand sea creatures, sea urchin, including urchins, starfish, and clams, which will be watched closely back on Earth to see what weightlessness did to the early development of the animals. With Endeavour home, NASA's next mission is scheduled to leave for 16 days in space. Columbia will conduct long-duration life and microgravity science projects beginning on June 20th. John Holloman, CNN reporting. Eine russische Trägerrakete einen westlichen TV-Satelliten ins All gebracht. Der Astra 1F ist der zweite Satellit der Luxemburger Gesellschaft SES, der digitale Übertragungen möglich macht. In etwa acht Wochen wird er seine Arbeit im All aufnehmen. In Deutschland soll das digitale Fernsehen noch in diesem Jahr starten. Konur. Erstmals hat eine russische Trägerrakete einen westlichen Telekommunikationssatelliten ins All befördert. Der Start vom Kosmodrom Baikonur in Kasachstan verlief problemlos. Nach fünf Stunden erreichte der digitale Fernsehsatellit seine Erdumlaufbahn. Damit sind jetzt sechs Astra-Satelliten im All. Die ersten fünf waren vom französischen Raumfahrtzentrum Kourou in den Weltraum transportiert worden. Mit dem Kosmodrom Baikonur haben die europäischen Satellitenbetreiber nun einen weiteren Partner. NASA, America's Space Agency, is growing plants. Now, if that little fact doesn't get your attention, try this. The reason behind NASA's foray into horticulture is its desire to learn how to keep humans alive for long periods in space. Okay, are you thoroughly confused? Here's Lori Waffenschmidt to sort it all out with a report on some of the problems that astronauts might face on months-long missions to Mars or the Moon. Imagine being shut away in a chamber like this for up to a year, living in your own little world. Scientist Nigel Packham hopes it happens to him sometime in the next decade. Last year, Packham, a Lockheed Martin researcher, spent more than two weeks cooped up in a chamber the size of a jail cell at NASA's Johnson Space Center. He was all alone with only a bunch of plants for company. I spent 15 days in a 100 square foot area uh, to demonstrate the plants can keep me alive um, by producing my oxygen for me and taking out my carbon dioxide. NASA scientist Don Henninger says the Advanced Life Support Program, as it's called, is a crucial part of preparing for long trips into space. We'll have to recycle the water and the air, and in, even in the cases of long duration missions to the Moon and Mars, we'll actually have to grow food and recover resources from the solid waste. Nigel Packham says the plants proved to be responsive roommates during his 15-day mission to nowhere. When I exercised, they in fact responded within about 10 minutes to provide more oxygen and take up more carbon dioxide. Quite remarkable. And Packham says there were psychological benefits too. It also makes you feel a little bit like you're outside. It, uh, it smells very different. It's like a breath of fresh air. NASA is gearing up for another 15-day test, this time with a crew of four in a larger chamber. Anything that can be recycled will be. Everything from air to shower water to urine. The second level of the chamber is where we have all of our air revitalization hardware. So these systems remove carbon dioxide from the atmosphere that's exhaled by the test subjects. We take the carbon dioxide and split out the oxygen molecule from the carbon dioxide for reuse and, pre and breathing. This bioreactor, as I say, takes all the wastewater and removes all the organic material as it goes up. 
What you're seeing here are actually microbes or bacteria. Uh, may look pretty nasty, but in fact, uh, they're doing a wonderful job microbiologically. This is the water we actually end up with. This is the, the clean water, which is much, much cleaner than you'll ever drink at home. A year from now, NASA plans an even longer test, one that'll require four people to live in a larger, multi-level chamber, like this model, for up to three months. How those folks interact is going to be one of the more interesting results of that test. And when it comes time for the ultimate test, an experiment that'll last a whole year, Nigel Packham says he hopes he's one of those chosen. Well, actually, it, it really wasn't as bad as it, as it looks. Uh, once you get over the initial shock when the door is closed, uh, and as long as you're not claustrophobic, I have a window that I can look out on the outside wall, and there's always someone out there. So, uh, no, I don't, didn't feel lonely at all. Packham says this research, though complex, is critical as America prepares for future space missions. If I really didn't think that we were going to go back to, to, uh, to the moon or to Mars, I wouldn't be at my job every day. And I think that's the only way we're going to get there is by actually showing that we can keep people alive for periods of up to a year in chambers like this. Lori Waffenschmidt, CNN, reporting. Um 3.56 Uhr mitteleuropäischer Zeit hob die Trägerrakete vom Weltraumbahnhof in Kourou ab. Gut 20 Minuten nach dem Start setzte sie zwei Fernmeldesatelliten aus. Der eine soll Israel mehr als zehn Jahre mit Fernsehprogrammen versorgen, der andere soll Daten für Indonesien und Südostasien übertragen. Kosten für den Bau der Satelliten und den Ariane-Start rund 300 Millionen Mark. Die Rakete Ariane hat zwei Satelliten erfolgreich im All ausgesetzt. Kurz vor 4 Uhr morgens hob die schlanke Rakete vom ESA-Weltraumbahnhof Kourou in französisch Guayana ab. 20 Minuten später setzte Ariane den indonesischen Satelliten Palapa C2 in seiner Umlaufbahn aus. Danach wurde der erste kommerzielle Fernsehsatellit Israels Amos 1 ausgeklingt. Bei der Ariane Space sind bereits 45 weitere Satellitentransporte gebucht. This is shuttle launch control at T-minus three hours and holding, where the astronauts in the crew quarters are just entering the dining room for breakfast. Their activities are right on schedule this morning. And here are all six of our STS-77 crew members ready for breakfast and our traditional cake on the table at the end mission specialist. Dan Birch, our flight engineer on this mission. Kurt Brown, our pilot on this flight, will be busy with numerous rendezvous activities. Uh, with our commander, John Casper, making his fourth flight into space today. Mission Specialist Mario Runco making his third trip into space. Mission Specialist previously in 1991 and 1993. And Andy Thomas from Australia, our payload commander during the flight. Australia and uh, Canadian Mission Specialist Mark Garneau. Team, now our commander and pilot, and our flight engineer at the far end. This is shuttle launch control at T-minus three hours and holding. The astronauts have just completed their weather briefing and are now moving to the suit-up room. This is shuttle launch control at T-minus three hours and holding, where we're in the suit-up room now with the astronauts. We just saw our commander, John Casper, and here is pilot Kurt Brown. And here is Mission Specialist Andy Thomas. He's our payload commander from southern Australia. He has considerable 
background in microgravity research, having been uh, at NASA's uh, at the Jet Propulsion Laboratory in Pasadena before joining the astronaut corps. So for all the microgravity research on this flight, he's the logical one to be uh, taking that responsibility for the oversight of all of this uh, microgravity research on this mission. And here is Dan Birch making his third flight. He flew previously on STS-51 in 1993 and STS-68 in 1994, so this is his third flight. He'll be our flight engineer on this mission. Here is uh, Canadian mission specialist Mark Garneau. He'll be doing a number of microgravity research positions, uh, experiments, particularly with the aquatic research facility. This is his second flight into space. He uh, was a payload spe uh, specialist previously on STS-41G in 1984. And here is Mario Runco making his third trip into space. He was on uh, STS-44 in 1991 and STS-54 in 1993. Environmental Services officer, officer in the Navy. We have about a minute left in this built-in hold. Crew should be preparing to leave the astronaut quarters here in just another couple of minutes. Again, and here are our astronauts now, just leaving the suit-up room, headed for the elevator. Third floor of the operations and checkout building located in the KSC industrial area. And Director of Flight Crew Operations Dave Liesma is with them. Bob Cabana will be flying the weather reconnaissance this morning. Entering the Astro Van here momentarily, where we see members of the media and KFC employees. And here they come. Uh, John Casper now. So uh, we have a good deal of flexibility to launch uh, based on any number of wind patterns that we see. And right now it doesn't look like uh, upper level winds are any issue for us at all today. Mario Runco will be sitting in the seat next to the crew orbiter access hatch in the mid-deck. And next to them is, is uh, Dr. Mark Garneau, who has already boarded. Up on the flight deck, Dan Birch, as the flight engineer, will sit in the aft center seat. Payload Commander Andy Thomas will sit in the aft right seat behind 
pilot Kirk Brown. Kirk Brown and Mark Garneau will switch on landing. Kirk Brown will sit uh, on the mid deck next to Mario Runco and Andy Thomas. We'll move up. Track the orbiter access arm. Yeah, let's just go for orbiter access arm. We've got Charlie to internal reactants. Hydrogen tank now on the bottom two thirds of the external tank being pressurized. SRB nozzles gimbal to flight position. Firing chain is armed. Sound suppression water system is activated. Rain safety command systems are armed. T minus 10, 9, 8, 7. Ignition sequence start. 5, 4, 3, 2, one, zero, and liftoff of the Space Shuttle Endeavor to develop the practical and the beneficial aspects of space. Roger all, Endeavor. Houston now controlling. Endeavor's underway on its 11th trip to space. Currently rolling on course from an east, east northeast trajectory away from the Kennedy Space Center toward a 39 degree inclination, 153 nautical mile altitude orbit. The engines on board Endeavour have now throttled back to two-thirds throttle to prepare the spacecraft to pass through the area of maximum air pressure and go supersonic. Endeavour speed now 700 miles per hour, altitude four and a half miles. Endeavour, go with throttle up. Go with throttle up. Three engines on Endeavour now back at full throttle, altitude 10 miles. Endeavour traveling 1,400 miles per hour, 8 miles east-northeast of the Kennedy Space Center. 
twenty and a half minutes since launch, and Deborah's already used more than two and a quarter million pounds of propellant. The spacecraft weighs less than half of what it did at liftoff. One minute, 50 seconds since liftoff, and we're now traveling 2,700 miles per hour. Altitude 24 miles, 24 miles downrange from the Kennedy Space Center. Flight controller standing by for burnout and jettison of the twin solid rockets. Booster officer confirms a good jettison of the twin solid rockets. Endeavour now at second stage main engines. Endeavour performance nominal. Copy nominal. ELT OTC, clear caution warning memory, verify no unexpected errors. ELT alert. Endeavor OTC, close and lock your visors, initiate the two-flow, and we all give you our best wishes for a smooth ride up the hill. My booster locks tank. Roger and work, and we'll see you in 10 days. Endeavor, and fight, we see the roll. Copy. Press to ATO. Endeavor, press to ATO. Press to ATO.
morning, Andy. Good morning, Bill.
you can see it in the TVs, but the uh, the parabolic antenna has a, a sort of a rippling to it, almost as if it were in a wind. Yeah, we copy and we can see that. Endeavour Houston requests you zoom in on the uh, lens uh, so we can uh, see if any of these uh, perturbations are uh, um, uh, more readily apparent. Okay, Bill, we'll put that to work. Endeavour Houston, just for information, uh, the CG of the combined system is nine feet above the bottom of the Spartan. Okay, Bill, that sure helps. We were trying to actually figure that out up here because it's obviously rotating a point uh, about that point, and we were trying to keep that steady in the coax. Endeavour Houston for the flight deck. Go ahead, Chris. So we'd like a uh, Holmes interconnect tank switch. It's orbit pocket page 8-4, and it'll be from left to right. Okay, Chris, we'll put that to work, uh, switching from left to right. And Kurt, when that's complete, we'd like a repress using helium press A. AG-10, side B, only hold. 
Jeffrey Houston for uh, Spartan. Go ahead. Yeah, at this point, uh, our, what we'd like to do real quickly is uh, see if we can get a view uh, of the top of the Spartan and then go ahead and proceed with the berth and RMS power down. Okay, and that's exactly where we were going, Bill. Uh, so we it now. Thanks, John. You got a good down link? Affirmative. We'd like to stay in the uh, RMS da uh, damp, of course, until Spartan is uh, berth. You do have a go to maneuver, um, and of course, we need to be in free drift during the final berthing. Uh, Bill, Roger that. I, uh, I followed the flight plan. I just want to make sure that the attitude in the flight plan was still good. Deborah Houston, we are with you in the space hab. Good, Mark, and uh, good morning to Kurt down there as well. Hey, Chris, they don't let me back here very much. Uh, there's not much pilot science in the space app. Nice place to visit, Roger. I completed all the art steps. Uh, I wanted to give you some numbers if you're ready to copy on page 5 9. Uh, completion of the art US uh, MCU stowage. The MET is one day, five hours, 35 minutes.
Endeavour door is opening, if you can see it. Roger, we're watching. The two satellite is on its way. Take copy, sounds great. And you said, Endeavour, it looks like it has a bit of a tip off right after it left the field of view. I'll turn the camera up so you can see it. Take copy, a bit of a tip off right. Hawk Endeavour for the Sure do, Mario. Good downlink.
got it hard. He does it so much at night. Curl up in here. He does it so many times at night. He's really good at my it. Real throw yourself in. <laughs> and uh I just got it. Well on your way. Okay, yeah, that's it. 99. Cleverly reposition the lighting on the Mario. Uh, Andy's, Mud light. Andy's very clever. Andy's very clever. There, there, we, there we go, we're getting some light. Oh. I think we said don't use this. <laughs> That's interesting, but this is your spin up and it just stopped. Oh, no, oh, you mean the liquid? Yeah, the liquid just kills the motion. Andy keeps reading the camera view. Reinverts, because yeah. it's like a shell. Oh, oh that's neat. Uh -oh. Oh, look at the surface tension. Attaches kind of to the needle. Oh, you can see your you can see your reflection in it. See? Yeah. Or I mean your. Beauty, beauty. What okay. a flyby. Butterfly by, here you go. Or see it. Come by. Then you can, uh, I can't get a telephone stand by. Okay, good. Okay, you can just look at your example while I'm by. Okay. Going down. We need Andy up here to get a complete meal with everybody. Well, ground moves, they don't want to let them do that. Sausage patty, yes. Mm. Good. Mm. Mm. Hey Andy, I can make an egg McMuffin.
There was a successful test of an inflatable antenna from the space shuttle Endeavour on Monday, and it's got NASA scientists excited about the prospects for a new generation of antennas. The tennis court-sized antenna was deployed from a satellite called Spartan, launched Monday morning from Endeavour. Filled with nitrogen gas, the inflatable antenna was a prototype for a new antenna design that should be cheaper, lighter, and easier to assemble than current models. NASA hopes to use inflatable antennas in space for radio astronomy, communications, and environmental monitoring. The Russian space station Mir hosted American spacecraft Pepsi this week. Two Russian cosmonauts on space station Mir took a spacewalk with a large nylon and aluminum replica of a new Pepsi can. The tethered can was put in orbit 200 miles above the Earth while they filmed a new commercial to be released in 1997. The Russians had no real Pepsi drink on board, but PepsiCo is paying the Russians a seven-figure sum for their cosmonauts to pose with the can. Deva setzt am Morgen mit Hilfe eines Roboterarms den Spartan-Satelliten aus. Wenige Minuten später wird eine in dem Himmelskörper verstaute Satellitenantenne langsam zur Größe eines Tennisplatzes aufgeblasen. Die Antenne aus Aluminium wiegt lediglich 60 Kilo. Sie könnte nach Ansicht der Raumfahrtbehörde NASA durch die Gewichtsersparnis den Bau neuer künstlicher Trabanten im All revolutionieren. Die neue Antenne kostet nach Angaben der amerikanischen Weltraumbehörde bis zu ihrem Einsatz weniger als 10 Millionen Dollar. Dagegen kosten vergleichbare Kommunikationssatelliten 200 Millionen Dollar. Coming back down to Earth, the US Space Shuttle Endeavour is set to land in less than two hours from now. CNN International plans live coverage of the touchdown. Ten days in space, the crew of the US Shuttle Endeavour is returning home, as you can see. On your screen About there, it's coming touchdown. back down Never to the Kennedy Space Carolines Center, its home base. Feet. Earlier, there were fears that bad weather at the Florida site would force Endeavour to land at Edwards Air Force Base in California instead. The U.S. space agency, NASA, was anxious to land the shuttle on schedule because Endeavour's power reserves are running low and the weather is expected to deteriorate at both landing sites on Thursday. Endeavour's six astronauts had a busy flight. During their mission, for instance, they tested a giant inflatable antenna, and they also released a tiny test satellite with a deliberate wobble to see if it would stabilize itself by natural means. And the landing gear is now uh, down and locked. Main gear touchdown. And nose gear touchdown. Endeavour is rolling out on runway 33 at the Kennedy Space Center, completing its 11th mission in space, 161 orbits of the Earth, traveling 4.1 million miles. And stay with us. World News Asia returns after this break. Endeavour ist nach zehntägigem Flug durch das All sicher zur Erde zurückgekehrt. Sie landete kurz nach 13 Uhr in Florida. Die sechs Astronauten an Bord haben ein erfolgreiches wissenschaftliches Programm hinter sich. Zum Beispiel konnten sie eine Antennenschüssel aussetzen, die mit Hilfe von Stickstoff in wenigen Sekunden zur Größe eines Tennisplatzes aufgeblasen worden war. Die amerikanische Raumfähre Endeavour ist unterdessen sicher zur Erde zurückgekehrt. Das Shuttle mit sechs Astronauten an Bord landete planmäßig auf dem Weltraumbahnhof in Cape Canaveral. Während des zehntägigen Fluges wurden zahlreiche Experimente erfolgreich ausgeführt. Die gegen Weltraummission heute sicher zur Erde zurückgekehrt. Punkt 13.09 Uhr setzte das Space Shuttle auf dem Weltraumbahnhof Cape Canaveral auf. Die Raumfahrtzentrale NASA bewertete den Flug als vollen Erfolg. Die sechsköpfige Endeavour-Besatzung hatte während des Fluges zahlreiche Experimente erfolgreich ausgeführt. Rückkehr zur Erde. Nach zehntägigem Flug ist die amerikanische Raumfähre Endeavour sicher in Cape Canaveral im Bundesstaat Florida gelandet. Die sechs Astronauten hatten im All Experimente zur Errichtung von Raumstationen durchgeführt und zwei Satelliten ausgesetzt. Die Endeavour bleibt nun acht Monate im Hangar und wird gründlich überholt.
Die amerikanische Raumfähre Endeavour ist heute sicher zur Erde zurückgekehrt. Nach einem erfolgreichen Flug landete der Shuttle planmäßig auf dem Weltraumbahnhof Cape Canaveral im US-Bundesstaat Florida. Schon kurz nach dem Start vor zehn Tagen gelang den Astronauten ein revolutionäres Experiment. Mit Hilfe eines ausgesetzten Satelliten bliesen sie eine Parabolantenne zur Größe eines Tennisplatzes auf. Its home base in Florida after a 10 day mission, which tested a giant inflatable antenna and a tiny self stabilizing satellite. The astronauts fired twin backing rockets as the shuttle flew tail first over Australia to drop the spaceship out of orbit. Patchy ground fog and low cloud, which had threatened to delay the touchdown or divert the shuttle to the backup landing site in California, failed to materialize. Die US-Raumfähre Endeavour ist planmäßig zur Erde zurückgekehrt. Während ihres zehntägigen Fluges hatten die Astronauten neue Entwicklungen getestet. Am erfolgreichsten war das Aufblasen dieser Antenne mit Stickstoffgasen. Innerhalb von sieben Sekunden erreichte sie die Größe eines Tennisfeldes. Die neue Antenne soll den Einsatz von Satelliten einfacher und billiger machen. Die US-Raumfähre Endeavour ist nach zehntägigem Flug wieder auf die Erde zurückgekehrt. Mit sechs Astronauten an Bord landete sie am Mittag auf dem Gelände des Raumfahrtzentrums in Cape Canaveral. Die Besatzung hatte während des Fluges eine Reihe wissenschaftlicher Experimente durchgeführt. Sie setzte auch eine aufblasbare Antenne von der Größe eines Tennisplatzes aus. Mit der spektakulären Aktion sollte die weitere Verwendung solcher Konstruktionen für die Kommunikation, für die Astronomie und für Umweltbeobachtungen getestet werden. Has a go for the deorbit burn. Happy flight. Never Houston. Go ahead. The weather trends at KSC are very favorable. If you'd like, I can read you the new forecast. But basically, weather has removed the occasional 1,500 foot broken four miles in fog, and the prevailing forecast remains the same. Based on that, you have a go for the deorbit burn. Roger, we're glad to hear that. Go for the burn. Good off flight. Copy. Flight guidance, we see a good burn, good residuals. Copy. In fact, our left fuel gas gauge was a little bit biased, so we did get a lot of quantity message, no action, of course. Copy. Model go for command. Copy. Weather Houston, we have you through Mila, com check. Loud and clear, honey. Got you loud and clear, and we have an update on your weather at KSC. It's looking good. 13,000 scattered, 23,000 thin broken. Winds 250, 6 peak to 10. We saw a beautiful sunrise down here, and the STA says you should have no clouds on the hack. Sounds good. Never Houston, we show you on energy approaching the hack. No change to weather. Your new winds are 260 at 6 peak to 9. 
and you are go for nominal drag shoot deploy. Roger, nominal drag shoot deploy. Flight CSS, all commanders flying. Copy. On at the 180. Copy. Endeavor, on at the 180. Roger. Copy, field in sight. Gear down and locked. Copy. Main gear touchdown. Copy. Yes, sir, Houston. Max Flight, any immediate deltas? No deltas flight. Okay, no Welcome deltas. Welcome back, Endeavour, and congratulations on a highly successful flight. Endeavour, you set a record for the most rendezvous in the shuttle era and the longest amount of time spent in rendezvous ops. Congratulations. Roger, and thank you very much, Arlene, for all the support from your end. And you look overhead, you see the flash. I know, the lashes have got lots of flashes. I know, it's been incredible, incredible. I got lots of it. Oh, all right. That's amazing. It's spectacular. All right. Coming back to yours. Hey, guys, we're going to drive on a hook of Two bars, two bars. We're going to drive off one. After each flight, we like to get a quick photo of all crew members uh, in front of the vehicle that uh, was at home for the past 10 days.